thank you to Anya Bike Adventures for helping make this best ever food review show motorbike trip happen. Anya Bike Adventures offers one day to two week pre-planned or customized guided motorbike adventures across all of Vietnam, parts of Nepal and the Himalayas. Anya Bike has you covered with a licensed English-speaking guide to ensure a safe and fun tour from start to finish. Mm. We used Anya Bike for our trip. Whether you're an experienced biker or a first-timer, Anya Bike allows you to ride with style and peace of mind, exploring the best historical landmarks, local food spots, and awe-inspiring landscapes. Link in the description below to find out more about Anya Bike. What? Is there another way? The map says that way. Hey, try jumping. Last time on our best ever Central Vietnam bike journey, Andrew and I explored Hoi An, where we witnessed some industries crushed by the pandemic and others that are still flourishing despite these crazy times. Pandemic proof. Today we're leaving central Vietnam's coastline, ocean, and beaches, and heading into the unfamiliar central highlands. It's pretty cool that they're still unspoiled country. Dotting these picturesque mountains, dozens of this country's indigenous ethnic groups, diverse tribes who have been here for generations, all with their own culture. Oh boy. Customs and food. Oh, what'd you put in there? Andrew and I are on a food-inspired mission. <laughs> breaking away from the tourist spots and going off the eaten path. Is that a house? That's a shed. How do you get up there to live? But first, breakfast. Want to find great food in Vietnam? Look for vendors with only one item on the menu. There, you'll find years of singular focus on a single broth a single recipe, honing it in, bringing it to perfection. <laughs> this restaurant has been doing that for 30 years, perfecting their iconic, um... Cao Lao. Cao Lao. Cao Lao. Mm. Mm. This is sort of like the quintessential noodle dish of Hoi An. We've had the other one, Mi Wang, and these are sort of the two dishes the Vietnamese people would think of first when they think of Hoi Anese food. This local classic starts with bold, thick rice noodles, then greens and slices of cha su pork. All that gets soaked in their homemade soy-based sauce before serving a spoon of chili oil and crunchy bits. Let's try it out. Let's go. Oh, I like that. The pork, just like fried pork fat. I love how Vietnamese food is always on two levels. The actual taste, but texture is always taken into consideration. Yeah. If it's something that's just mushy or without a crunch, they're gonna add something to it. Yeah, there's a few textures going on here. I like even the bean sprout, that nice little fresh burst. Yeah. Very nice. We're getting out of Hoi An today. It's a whole new level to this trip, except I don't really exactly know what we're doing, but... Mm. Oh wait, we got another card. Oh no, thank you. Why does she always have a skull? Her face looks like she's in pain just working with me. So, it says, good morning, gentlemen. So far, your epic motorcycle journey has included hardly any motorcycling. That changes today. From Vietnam's central coastline, you'll be moving inland to its beautiful mountains. Here, you'll become acquainted with some of Vietnam's 54 ethnic minority groups. Also, whatever your definition of normal food is, change it. What's that mean? one of Southeast Asia's most sought-after beaches, a coastline seen by millions each year. Due to the current block on outside tourists, this is a beach we could have all to ourselves. But no, we've got Vietnam's East Sea in our rear view as we follow a new path to the mountains, trading comfort and tranquil predictability for the unknown. Some call it adventure. For some, driving a motorcycle can be relaxing. Driving a motorcycle in Vietnam is not. 
It's an exercise in constant and unwavering focus. An abundance of obstacles threaten your existence around every turn. Dogs, trucks, rocks, and on and on. After an hour, you'll feel like you just wrapped the math section of the SAT. Your brain needs fuel. So Vietnam also has these. Rest stops done their way, equipped with hammocks and refreshments. Squeeze juice from the sugar cane. Ah, that is refreshing after some motorcycling. It is very hot. It is cooking, man. We this... seem comfortable. It's not comfortable at all. No, this is a small respite in amongst hours of pain. We're not even halfway to Kantum. Me said, you need to change your idea of what's normal food. That's after you ate the rabbit. Mm? Uh, mm. Well, how do you get any worse than that? I bet that was the peak. I'm guessing from here, it's gonna be noodles, local vegetables. I wonder what they have in Konsum. I think it's gonna be fine, dude. Don't worry. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, we should go. This part of our journey follows the famous Ho Chi Minh Trail. A chain of roads and bridges that were built to transport soldiers and equipment to fight the Southern Vietnamese and Americans during the Vietnam War decades before. These days, it's a mix of clean, smooth highways and local trails from long ago. Whether they're safe or not is up to us to find out. Is this? What? Is there another way? The map says that way. This thing looks rickety as hell, man. This looks very old. Right. Don't, 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 don't. This is holding up the entire bridge. Why is it shaking so much? I don't know. It's just for, you know, dramatic effect, right? We've only got Not, a little This wide. is what is holding us up right now. Stop. Hey, try jumping. That was a big jump. Right. Okay, I think it's good. We just gotta be quick. Okay. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Ah! Yes! Yes! Producer Mee's coordinates have led us here, to this rubber tree forest. Rubber trees are only found in tropical regions, and Vietnam is the third biggest producer in the world. This particular forest belongs to Mr. Phum and his family. Good morning, everyone. Okay, good morning. Good morning, xin chào. Xin chào, xin chào, xin chào. Vietnam has so many different ethnic minorities. Part of the reason we're on this trip is to learn more about the different cultures. So, um, your family is part of which minority? We are from the Jing local. The Ye Jing people, an ethnic group of about 60,000. They're native to this area, but they also inhabit parts of Laos and Cambodia. They have their own unique language, culture, and of course, food. My aunt. Let's eat the breakfast today. This tribe welcomes their guests with a traditional sticky rice preparation cooked in bamboo with a special dip made from basil, salt, and chilies. Mm. Mm. There's not enough sticky rice in Vietnam. I know. It takes on some of the flavor of the bamboo a little bit, a little woody. <laughs> And this is just a fireball of flavor. I mean, it's spicy, super salty, and then mm. there's just tons of like intensely fragrant herbs on there. On the side, steamed bamboo shoots. I'll also yeah. put that in there. Oh, that's awesome. Today, we're here to kind of learn more about how you live and definitely about how you eat. And I want to know what is the plan today? Do you know what we're going to be eating for dinner? Today, we are going to go fishing and trap porcupine. I'm sorry, trap. Trap. trap, yes, trap a porcupine. A porcupine. A porcupine. When we trap the porcupine, what will we do with it? Is it like a catch and release program? Uh, then we uh, go fishing. Oh, then we go fishing. <laughs> oh, See? That's a relief. Yeah, I thought he was going to say eat it. Thank God, man. So we don't yeah. eat it. Do we eat it? Yes. Oh. Oh, we eat it. 
I thought we just went fishing and then yeah, went home. It feels inevitable. We're gonna eat a porcupine. Okay, here's what I think. You go fishing. Okay. I'll figure out the other part. Yeah, but you have to get fish. Because if you don't get any fish, hmm. then we only have porcupine. No problem. So I have been split up from Sonny, who apparently has to go hunting porcupine, which sounds dangerous, so I'm much more happy to be here fishing which I quite frankly love. Previously, I've fished a lot in Australia, but on an ocean with big boats and rods, and I can't imagine this is gonna be anything like this. But let's give it a try. While Andrew is away doing his thing, I'm right here getting ready to learn how to trap a porcupine. I took 11 years of Boy Scouts and we never covered porcupine trapping. Also, I was never in the Boy Scouts. Right now, my man is behind me. He's trying to scope out the perfect spot to set up a trap. All right, let's see how it works. Step one, I need to figure out what's going on. So I'm gonna try and uh, just watch and mimic. Hey, uh, um, bắt cá như sao? Hay là quăng cá, quăng chai. Dan, xem. Có không? Không có cá. So there's no fish there, but I'm gonna watch him one more time and then I'm gonna try give it a go. So right here, he's kind of dug a pit, and then now he's gonna put this bamboo stake into the ground. From here, he puts a branch around, and he puts two ends of the branch into the ground. It's basically gonna be like a giant mouse trap. Do they have any cheese? How long do you think we need to wait? 30 minutes? 35 minutes? In three or four days, we have uh, any more. Can he try to speed it up to like 20 minutes? I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm looping this around my arm. Now I pick up with the fingers. Oh God, he's not that impressed. Lean I'm really it. wishing that I was paying more attention to the action. Oh, okay. That wasn't too bad. Oh man, maybe I've got one this time. Let's see. about 30 feet from the trap. I just want to witness the moment something goes in there. Okay, that was nothing. That was just acting. Oh, shit. I know right now Andrew is catching a bunch of fish and I can't come back without an animal. That would be a failure. I'm not gonna let Andrew beat me. Unfortunately, Andrew can fish harder, but I can't wait harder. I just have to wait. Guys, I'm pretty disappointed. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And now a meal of just porcupine awaits me. We have finally arrived at Yip Nyai Mok village. Preparations for a feast have begun, but do we have anything to feast on, Andrew? Bro, I've got some bad news. Dude, I fished my ass off. So you have no fish? Nothing, man. What about the backup fish? The backup fish. You didn't use the backup fish? There's a backup fish? Yeah, we never catch fish on this show. We just have a backup fish. Oh, man. That would be way easier. So you didn't get a real fish or a fake fish? No. That's right. At least we've got the trapping. How did the porcupine trapping go? The trapping? Let me show you. Bring it in. Right here, my man, we have one porcupine that has been trapped. That is insane. It's kind of tragic because it's a beautiful creature. It's got to be 20, 25 pounds, right? I feel legit bad, bro. I feel bad too. Oh. But what can we do? Uh, this is what they do here. This is dinner. Porcupine meat, although celebrated in this community, is consumed pretty rarely. Last time Mr. Fum and his wife had it was five years ago. So Andrew and I are especially lucky to get a taste today. Wow, guys, this looks amazing. Can you translate a little bit? I know la thay đẹp lắm. Thay đẹp lắm. Let's take a look at the spread here. We have a little bit of all the farm animals and right. some from the wild. Chicken. Oh, this this is um the fish you caught. Is that right, Andrew? I mean, đây là cá ăn ăn bát. No more. Ăn bát. No more. He's like, yeah, whatever yeah, you yeah, say, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then this is the porcupine I helped capture by waiting. Yeah. And do you know where people always start? No. The booze. 
booze in this village comes in the form of straw wine. The idea is to mix a sense of community with a sense of getting ripped out of your mind. All those who imbibe must share. The purple color comes from the use of purple sticky rice in making the alcohol. That's surprisingly pretty good. It's really sweet. Yeah, mm. very sweet, like a cough syrup. All right. Our first porcupine dish is the most straightforward, porcupine barbecue. Oh, we just that's gave very it nice. We yeah. dipped it for you. Cheers. What the F? That's pretty dang good. Sensational, man. It's so porky. Uh, it's got some nice fat on it, a lot of protein. It just feels like you're a piece of steak almost. You guys know how to grow. This is a dish called fake dog meat because it's cooked exactly the way one would cook real dog, but instead of dog, we've got porcupine. Make sense? That's hilarious. <laughs> right. But it's fine because it's not really a dog. It's, uh, it's just a porcupine. <laughs> yeah, it's just a porcupine. <laughs> Hacked up sections of meat and bones are paired with lemongrass, ginger, pepper, MSG, salt, shrimp paste, sugar, honey, and fermented rice. It's stewed, you can taste some lemongrass and herbs, but this meat is also quite delicious. Mm. This is a kind of cultural food I can get behind. Even the intestines? Our final dish, porcupine intestine soup. Chopped organs, heart, liver, and intestines boil together until their juices flow as one. The gastric acids of the intestines contribute a deeply bitter flavor, much like pure bile. Let's try it. Let's go. Oh, mm. well, that's bitter. Mm. We just got to the drinking food segment. My God, that's um, different from what I expected. Mm. I'm gonna grab an intestine chunk. Wow. That's where the porcupine stops being good. <laughs> At least the liver had some texture to it. This was just gooey, the kind of inside bit that hadn't cooked quite as much yet, just gushed out. <laughs> oh, that was something different, that's for sure. I want you to drink some of this broth with me. Oh. So um, let's cheers and drink some of that. Oh, why are we doing this? All right, here we go. That's a really strong flavor. That is level 10 bitterness. Yeah. Oh my god. And cook it. Uh, yeah, he likes it. Please. Okay, so he's gonna take a bite. Oh, he's just wolfing it down. Love it. Yes! Oh man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Woo! Wow. Guys, thank you so much for your hospitality, for inviting us into your home, and allowing us to share this real delicacy that you haven't had for years and years. It was amazing. I just wanted to say, come on. about Vietnam. Everyone who comes here, they spend all their time in Ho Chi Minh City and right. Hawaii, like the developed places. But when you're on a bike, there's so many places here that they just can't develop. It's pretty cool that there's still unspoiled country. Definitely. You're doing the Ho Chi Minh Trail, it, it still has that. We should go. Yeah, we should definitely go. Yeah, let's go. The best parts of this country are the hardest to get to. Far from the airports and convenient modes of transportation. There's not gonna be tourists here for a long time. Among folks who see a foreigner less often than they see a porcupine. This is a part of Vietnam I truly love. Yes! But next time, that love is gonna be put to the test. Oh, they're everywhere. Oh, dude, they're crawling up you. Oh, my wrist! From I'm... researching and shooting, <laughs> to editing and mastering. Our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q and A's and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, another episode in the can and so many more fun ones to come. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about ah, Great, me too. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A peace. peace.